Now that we have a model, let's render it. Before I even set up my lighting or anything, I'm going to first build a studio backdrop. Uh, add a plane to the scene, press S to scale it up, and then I'm going to go to edit mode, edge select, select the back edge, hit the E key, which is a bit loose as you see, but if I press the Z key, it will constrain it to only the Z. Now I'll go into the modifiers and add a bevel, bevel modifier. I will increase the segments to 100 and apply, and then make sure it's on shade smooth. Now that that is set, I can position my character as desired, and I'll actually even go ahead and set up a camera. Now this camera will change quite a lot in just a moment, but first I've just added one to the scene and placed it facing the object. To jump into the camera, I will hit the camera button, and then I'll hit the N key, go to the view tab and say camera to view, and now I can actually just control it as the viewport. For now I'm just going to position it in a way that is rendering this, and we'll go from here. We're going to now set up our render settings. So the first thing to do is change from EV to cycles, and from CPU to GPU compute. I will actually go, go ahead and lower this number to something like 512 for the samples. And for now, this should be all you need to change for this particular panel. In the next panel, the output properties, I'm going to change my resolution. And you can type whatever number into here, but for now, and for demo purposes, I'll just do 1920 by 1920, and then uh, we'll go from there. The important thing, though, is to have the aspect ratio correct, because that's going to define what the camera sees. The next thing to set is in the World tab, which I'll actually just change the background color to black. But this is the shadow color of the scene which we'll see in just a moment. Now the final thing, not really, but nearly the final thing to do is to add a light to the scene. A sun is a great place to start, so we'll do that. I'll just put a sun in the scene. I'll go into its light properties and do a value of 10 and 10. And I will rotate it just by clicking and dragging this. And now we can hit the render preview. This is a high poly object, so it's going to take a moment. Here I can see that the light is coming at a strong angle, so I'm going to rotate it a bit so that it softens that angle out. I'm not really crazy about how large the character is in the frame, so I'm going to scale up the backdrop, hop back into the camera, and zoom it. Let's actually move it in, but then lower the focal length. Now. This object also I had done so that its feet were hanging below the rock, which might be interesting. I could also just go in and move those surfaces down, but I'm on the fence. I might do it like this. I may also just lift it up higher, like so. However you do it, that's a bit up to you. Now, the final thing to really do here would be to mess with the materials a bit. I'll actually even start with the backdrop. So I'll go into the Materials tab on that object and hit plus new. And nothing should have changed. This was the default material is the fresh material you actually add here. But you'll notice if you click on the base color, it is a slight off-white. So we'll make it a pure white. And then on my new object, I will also hit plus new. Also make it a pure white. But in this one, I'm going to open up the secret sauce, the subsurface menu. If I change this to a Christensen Burley, increase the weight, and increase the scale, light will actually scatter softly through the object. So if we were to zoom in, and I increase this value, you'll see that light is scattering through, giving it a bit of a pink color. If you increase the scale, this becomes much more dramatic. Less is more, though, so we're just going to do this quite subtly. If you want to change the translucency colors, you can actually adjust here. This is RGB, so it's set at R of 1 first. So if I increase the Gs, it becomes a little more yellowy. I'll do this for now, and I'll switch out of render view, and then I will hit render image. This render is finished, which it looks okay, so I'll do a save as, 
and I will put it into a folder. But I see a few things I'm not really crazy about. I don't really like this composition. Uh, it's too high off the ground. And I think it could use a little more pizzazz. So let's try one where it's actually intersecting with the ground. And I'm going to move the camera and zoom it in again. Now that the camera is in place and the focal length is there, I'm going to switch to the material preview. I'm going to use depth of field. So depth of field will actually really add some dramatic depth to the piece. You can actually type numbers lower than this, but this is all scale and distance dependent. I see that these very small numbers are going to really blur it out. And perhaps this is still too small a number. Now, one thing I'm not really crazy about is how blown out this one is. Now, this is white on white, which white on white can look really good, but in this case, I'm going to try something different. I have the sun currently set on this scene, but just to demonstrate, I'm going to change the lighting to an area lighting. And an area light is essentially a rectangular light. It really needs to amp up its power, though, in comparison to the sun, so I'll turn it to 1,000. And immediately, this has become significantly more dramatic. Here, the depth of field blur is a little extreme now, so I'm going to increase that. That looks a bit more comfortable. And I'm going to add one more bell and whistle to this before we do our final render, which is actually in the compositing tab. If I come up here to the compositing tab, I'm going to press Shift-A and Lens Distortion. I'm going to add some dispersion to this. And dispersion is a chromatic aberration, which will do some color separation. If we look at the previous render, this will actually be applied to the view. So if I crank this number up and we look at the preview, you'll see what is happening. The colors are starting to separate. This number is too high, though, so we'll crank that back. And with our new lighting setup, I think this will look pretty good. So I'll hit Render Image. Here, we'll see the chromatic aberration very subtly applied. You'll notice also how much more the detail of the sculpting really comes out in this particular lighting setup. So the important thing to take away from this is that it's all relative to your lighting. Lighting is super duper important. I like this render much better. I'm going to hit Save As. And we could call it there. But let's get a little wild. I'm going to, with this particular mesh selected, jump into the shader editor. And this is a mirror of what you actually see in the material tab, but what's nice about this is it will give us a bit more control via the node graph. I'm going to add a texture coordinates node, a mapping node, and a color ramp node. Plug these into here, these into here, and these into here. If I go into the material preview, we can see, as I slide this, this will give this a color gradient. And I can change the color here from black, for example, to let's do like a pale blue. And actually leave it, this is a pale blue-green, and we'll leave it to white. Now, let's take a look at what that looks like. Also quite nice. I think I'll add another color into the mix. Let's actually make this one the pale blue green. And we'll make this, what if we do like orange or red? This will give it a very airbrushed look. 
I'm also now getting fed up with my previous laziness and I am going to take a moment to extend the base of this rock. So to do that, I'm just going to come into edit mode, which is a high poly object, so this will take a moment. I am going to go into the select box and x-ray mode, and I'm just going to grab the base of this mesh. With it selected, I'm just going to move it down. And now I'll go back to object mode. Jump out of x-ray, slide this down. Let's see if this looks any better. It may not. I think that turned out pretty nice. And voila. One final thing you may do to take this to the final, final pinnacle for this particular simple render setup would be to adjust the background color. Of course, you could apply another color gradient to the background, but even doing something as simple as reducing the roughness to get a bit of a reflection could be a really nice touch. I'm not crazy about how this one is actually taking on the reflection here in the back, though. So if I was to do this, I would probably reposition my light in a way that either hides the reflection or maybe I would scale this up so that it disappears into the back. And I'll actually increase the roughness on this a bit more. So it's a very soft reflection. And now I might change the color. here's this final render. I'm really not crazy about how this base piece turned out, but that was my own fault for when I set it up. I think if I was to do this again, I might smooth this out a little, but for now, I'm going to call this a good enough render.